Hi guys, Greg at Panels R Us. Today I'm going to do a short video on setting up Falcon Pi Player, or FPP, uh, with Xlights uh, to run a virtual matrix from a Raspberry Pi. Now, instead of using a traditional P5 or P10 matrix that we sell in the store, you can use an old TV, if you've got one handy, to replicate the output that a matrix could give. Now we've had a couple of updates in software this week, so uh, Xlights is now up to 2020.24, and uh, Falcon Pi Player has updated to full release of version 4. So there may be a few little bits that you're not used to as we go, but we'll point them out hopefully as we come across them, and then you can see the way forward. So at the beginning we're going to set up FPP, make sure that's talking to our TV happily and it's got all the settings it needs and we'll then go through X lights and we'll just set up a, a matrix in there and then have it output to the Pi and get it playing on the screen. Now the Pi that we're using is here, this is a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, um, really useful for this roll because it's got a full-size HDMI socket so we can just run a cable straight into the back of the TV. The only other things I've got connected are a network card, uh, sorry, a network cable um, so it can get a, an IP address and talk to uh, Falcon Pi Player. Um, so that can talk to X lights through our home network um, and it's got power uh, through the micro USB. So let's get started. I've logged on to this instance already and just updated the, the name of the instance so I could make sure I was working on the right one. Uh, that's the only thing I've changed since imaging the card. So let's go through. The first thing it wants to do, of course, is to expand the storage space. So let's go into storage. Okay, this is different on version four. Uh, and here we are down the bottom here is grow file system. And yes, I do wish to do so. There we go, it says please reboot. Pi is now ready for us, so I can refresh this page. There we go, that's better. We've now got 29 and a half gig available uh, for putting sequences on. Um, that's on a 32 gig card. Okay, so that's ready. So let's go through and set up our FPP. So we need to go into channel outputs. Here we go, and we're going to go into other and add. We'll select a virtual matrix. There we go. Okay, and we'll set that active. Right, start channel. Because this is going to be the only model in our Xlights configuration, I'm going to start it at channel one but your uh, mileage might vary. You might want to start it at a different channel to make it compatible uh, with the rest of your show. Now, for the width and the height, um, you can make these very dense. Um, for this, I'm not going to overstress everything, so I'm going to go for a similar res resolution to as if I used a P5 panel of the same size. Now, this is a 27-inch TV, um, and when I've actually measured the glass a moment ago, uh, I see it's 58 centimeters wide by 33 tall. Now, if we're going to go for a five millimeter pixel spacing, as in P5, um, that will give us 166 pixels wide by 66 pixels tall. So that's the figures I'm going to use in this setup. So width 116, height. 66. There we go. So that's given us a total channel count of 20, just under 23,000, 22,968. So that looks about right. Uh, if I do the maths very quickly, 22,968 20, divided by 3 gives us an equivalent of 7,656 pixels. So that's a good number. Right, let's save that. 
and restart FPPD. FPPD has now restarted. The screen has blanked, so that's a good sign that our virtual matrix is now running because it's, it's cleared out the default view and it's given us a blank screen. So I'm now going to go into status uh, testing. And I'm going to, there we go. So this time, this is a good update in, the, in version four, I think, is it's updated the end channel to the number of channels that we've got configured, which is good. Um, version three didn't do that, and I was about to do it manually. So we should now, if I drag down to uh, cycle RGB all none, that should give us uh, the TV displaying red, green, blue, white, and off. So we're showing off at the moment, so it should be red, green, blue, white, off. Let's, uh, let's see what happens. Red, green, blue, white, and off. Perfect, happy days. And off, there we go, lovely. So that's working. We've got our outputs um, configured. Now I'm gonna go into the input side of FPP um, so we can set it up to receive the data from Xlights. So let's go into input output channel inputs. We're going to have one input. There it is. It's going to be a virtual matrix. It's going to start at channel one and I need my calculator again. 22968 there we go, 22968. Um, that's the total number of channels. We need to divide that now by 512 to find the number of universes that we need. So if I divide it by 512, that's given us 44.85. I'm gonna round that up to 45 to make life a little bit easier. So start channel one, universe one, universe count 45. And that gives us up to 23,040. We don't have to use all of them, but it's configured to receive them if we wanted to. There we go. So that's set. And we restart FPPD. There we go. That's now restarted. So I'm going to put the Pi now into uh, remote mode. Oh, sorry, bridge mode, my mistake. Bridge, it has saved and is restarting. FPPD has now restarted and it is running in bridge mode. So that means it will receive data coming in from Xlights um, to its IP address. It will translate that data and output it on the panel or the TV in this case. So let's now go into X lights. Now I've started a new um, folder in X lights for this. We're completely blank, so we're starting from scratch. So we'll go through the whole thing. First thing to do is to add a controller. So I'm going to add an Ethernet controller because X lights has got to push the data out uh, onto the network to get to the Pi and then do its thing. So let's add that in here. Name is going to be VM. Uh, the vendor is Falcon Pi Player, FPP, there we go. The model is going to be, I'm going to put LED panels on here for the model. The IP address of the Pi now that was 192.168.1.65 in our case. It's running E131. Start your universe is one. Universe count we set to 45. And the last one there is channels is 512 channels per universe. 
There we go. So we're showing 23,040 in total, which was the same count as we saw on the input side of the Pi a few moments ago. That's the controller done. We've now got to build our layout. A really simple one here. We're just going to go to the matrix screen and drag out a matrix. There we go. And we have to configure the, the width and the height to match our TV here. Now, if you recall, I said it was 116 uh, pixels wide. So 116. And it's going to be 66 tall. There we go. So that's our matrix configured. That's all we have to worry about in here because we're only using one channel. Start channel is number one. That's it. That's the only things that we need to configure at this time. Okay. We can now configure uh, a short sequence. So let's go for that. I mean, sequence, uh, file, new sequence. We'll just go with an animation at 40 frames per second. There we go. Right, so I'm just going to drag a butterfly onto the timeline. There it is, and I'll expand that. Now, to test our matrix, this is as simple now as turning on the output from X lights. And the TV should display what we're seeing in the model preview. So let's have a look. Okay. We're close. We're close. The, um, the matrix is showing data going from the bottom up and our preview is going from the top down. So let's just turn that off for a second. I'm going to go back into layout. The starting location on the matrix here is listed as bottom left. I'm going to swap that to top left. Save that. Go into sequencer. Click on our... There we go. And... And there we have it. Our virtual matrix is now outputting exactly the same as our real matrix and um, that is the basic config done. What you need to do then is to go on and add your sequences, build your show up and adjust as required but that is a very short introduction to setting up a virtual matrix. If you've got any questions do let me know either on Facebook um, as you'll know, I'm a frequent follower in the European Light Fanatics Facebook group. If you're not in there uh, and you're resident in Europe, then please do join us. We're an active little group. Um, lots of seasoned folks, um, all willing to help newbies. And we've got quite a lot of newbies this year, so it's really great to see you. Uh, really great to see the hobby um, taking off in the UK. Um, it's been huge across the pond in America and whatnot by now already. Um, but in the UK, it's been a bit slow to start, but we're getting a good following now. So please do join us in the ELF uh, European Light Fanatics Forum. Do have a look at our website, panelsareus.co.uk, and I hope to see you soon. Cheers.